I guess here's a demonstration of the extraction forceps which are used in the uh, dental clinic for the extraction of various teeth and uh, this is a complete kit of uh, extraction forceps that is used for the upper and lower uh, teeth that includes the incisors, canines, premolars and the molars. So basically let's explain what a forcep includes. It has three parts, this is the beak area, these are the hinges and this is the handle. The beaks are the main differentiative parts. Uh, based on uh, what the beak is, we can decide what extraction forcep it is and where it can be used. This is the hinge area which helps in uh, the suppression of the handles and the beaks. This is the hinge area and this needs proper care while you are sterilizing your extraction forceps. This is the handle area. It has two handles and uh, it comes in like uh, different varieties. A few come with the the serrations or lines here and these come with the holes that comes for the grip while you are using the gloves hand gloves and uh, these are the depression areas where you can place your fingers this is how you can place your fingers and have a proper grip on the extraction forcep so this is a complete kit of the forceps and uh, let's start explaining each and every forcep here so starting with this As it's given, it's a upper central incisor can and canine forcep. You can look at the distance between the two beaks here. There's no much distance so that uh, it can have a proper grip on the tooth. And uh, this is the hinge area of the forcep. And you can look at the serrations in the beak. These are the various serrations and there is a pretty groovy area in the beak which helps in the um, proper holding of the tooth while it, it's being pulled or else a slip, uh, slip out of the tooth can uh, even uh, damage the opposite arch uh, tooth structure or else can fracture this tooth which you are trying to extract so this is uh, the number one extraction forcep it's given number one forcep uh, which is for the upper central and uh, the lateral incisor and also the canines the next one is the number 7 forcep which is used for the upper premolars extraction and this is the way you hold this forcep where the tooth is located on the upper area and you are holding the premolar in this way and pulling it out so this has a wider area of gap between the two beaks when compared to the other forcep which we discussed earlier and this is uh, basically for the premolars the uh, left and right upper premolars it has a similar kind of serrations and depression in the beak so this is the number 7 forcep the next one is the number 90 the upper molars left forcep where the beaks are uh, one has uh, two heads on the beak two sharp edges and one is a simple sharp edge where this one is used for uh, fitting into any depression or fulcrum in, in the tooth which you can take as an access point to pull out the tooth so this basically is a to uh, tooth area with, uh, where the sharp point of the forcep would be going and lodging itself and the opposite two heads are the ones which would uh, take uh, which would sit along the curve of the tooth and this is used for the molars the left molars so this is the number 90 used for the upper left molars the next one would be the number 89 this is the similar kind of forcep like the 90 but this is used only for the right upper molars the difference here you can see is the beaks are located at an opposite angle here you are seeing the, uh, the two headed beak on the right side that's um, the left side for the patient and uh, the one headed beak is 
on the left side so it's the other way in the number 90 forcep that's the only difference between these two forceps let's discuss about the next two forceps that's number 17 and the number 18 forceps is at the 17 and 18 forceps and they both are also for the molars for the uh, left and right uh, molars the 17 is for the right molars and 18 is for the left molars the difference here is that you have a single sharp edged um, beak on one side and other side is a curve that sits onto the curve of the tooth and the other side is for uh, basically near the cervical area of the tooth where uh, the beak goes and places itself for, so that there's an extra grip support provided for the extraction forceps to pull out the tooth these both have almost the same functioning but they are for the opposite side tooths one is for the left and one is for the right so these are one, the number 17 and 18 extraction forceps and this is a typical upper root forceps and the roots are usually left out when uh, there is an improper extraction of the uh, molar tooth where uh, sometimes the root uh, or a root even if it's curvy or uh, a bit bent down then it would break and this forceps would be used at that time it's number 51a this is used for the extraction of the upper roots it has a typical uh, thin ed edge on the hip so the shins are almost the same and that groovy area would be holding the root properly while you are trying to remove it from the upper areas that's the maxillary area and uh, in the roots even when there's a grossly decayed tooth where the crown part is usually chipped off or broken or fractured the root area cannot be removed so easily when they are separated from each other so each each root could be separately removed using this 51a upper root extraction forcep and the last upper forcep is the upper wisdom forceps that is the number 6 7 this is used for the third molar extraction of the upper third molars this is the way it's held and it has two wide groove areas so it uh, this is a single forcep that can be used for both left and right third molar so it is the number 6 7 forceps The lower one consists of this one, which is used for not only the roots but also but also the uh, lower uh, anterior teeth. This is number seventy-four N. This is the way the forceps is held. Here are the depressions where the fingers are located, and this is how you hold the tooth, and it's pulled out. And the next one is the lower premolar forceps, that is the number thirteen forceps. this forceps is uh, used for any kind of premolar extraction in the lower uh, lower jaw that's in the mandibular left and right premolars even when it's the normal extraction of the premolars or it could be the orthodontic uh, therapeutic extractions so you can see a distance between the beaks here in the premolar forceps well there's no distance in this root forceps or the anterior forceps of the lower jaw so this one is the number 13 extraction forceps the next one you see is the lower molars that's a hawk's bill this has got two beak areas two beaks on both side that have pointed edges and as there's no difference between uh, the left and right molars in the lower jaw this is a single forceps that could come to use for both the left and right molar extraction so this was the number 73 extraction forceps and this is the last extraction forceps that is the number 86 that's the lower molars wisdom and this wisdom forceps comes to use when you are uh, you are trying to extract one of the wisdom teeth that's on the left or right that's a eight number eight tooth and um, which is either uh, erupting out or it's impacted inside uh, you take you generally given incision and open the uh, area wide there after uh, the bone sectioning and cutting 
and after that when you give proper access points to this uh, extraction forcep this goes and holds itself into the access points and then you can pull the tooth out so this is how the number 86 lower mall mother wisdom forcep is used so this was the complete kit of uh, extraction forces that are used for the dental extractions of the upper and lower jaws. We will be discussing about the various uh, extraction kits uh, like the elevators, the cryers and uh, even the surgical kit. Do check out uh, our channel and subscribe to it. Also you can give your comments down there if you want to give, get an explanation about any particular instrument. Thanks for watching.